All right, so today, eat like a local. We're gonna talk about live fire. Live fire, I consider to be an ingredient into the actual dish. Just like you would use salt, pepper, acid, fat as a flavor, I definitely consider smoke, fire, ember, and an essential ingredient to a lot of cuisines. It's one of the purest forms of cooking. This, you have to play with it, you have to manipulate it. It's not as easy as what you think it is. Let's get at it. All right, today we're at Rosie Cannonball right in the middle of Montrose, which to me is one of the best parts of the city. Why? Because I live here and have most of my career. But today we're gonna talk about live fire, what Rosie Cannonball is doing here. They've got Montrose Cheese and Wine, which is their retail store. March is upstairs, tasting menu only, but today we're gonna go down to Rosie, right? We're gonna check it out. We're gonna talk about pizza. We're gonna talk about pasta. We're gonna talk about using local ingredients, but the most important thing we're gonna talk about is fire. Let's go in and check it out, all right? I'm ready for this one. It's a beauty. It's mesmerizing. It really is. <laughs> 12 feet it. of live fire, you can feel it standing here. It's really a part of the cooking and an ingredient, really, for us. Of course, I love Italian food. My father's from, from Naples. So it really made sense, but I didn't want it to be just Italian. So we center around, you know, Southern Europe, so we can touch up on, you know, France, Spain, Greece, Portugal and of course Italy. Yeah. And then, you know, each of those countries, you know, and, and those cuisines have an element of live fire in part of their cuisine. You really gotta keep up the fire and the coals going to make sure you're able to, you know, to put up. If you're not on top of it, yeah. like, if your fire yeah. starts to go low, low oh, yeah. and you're getting ready to rock, yep. all of a sudden, <laughs> gee, 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 that Especially machine on starts the grill. Kicking. It's about the feel, how you can feel it, how far you can put your hand, in, how how many seconds can you put your hand in the oven. Yeah, because uh, you feel like, mm-mm. Yeah, uh, you, know, we, you know, it's gonna, yeah. Torch pizza. This like magical thing that's happening in front of me is is honestly like as much as I'll come here, yeah. as much as you would think that one person would get tired of a dish, <laughs> I just don't. It's just so good, crunchy, crispy, soft. So how do you pronounce salty. this? Salty. Focaccia di Recco. Focaccia di Recco. Yeah. So Recco is actually a tiny town uh, in the Ligurian coast where focaccia is super famous, but it's usually that fluffy you know, yeah. bread, right? As Italians go, Recco said, the town of Recco said, we're not doing it that way. We're gonna do it our own way. You know? So this little crispy, delightful, yeah. like happy thing, two layers of dough, two layers. right? So you've got dough that's that's pulled, yeah. right? Yeah, let it kind of hang like over a little, yeah. let, it, let it get super thin, yeah. then you put it, what, cheese? Yeah, so the cheese, so the cheese actually made uh, uh, for us by Lira Rosa which makes all of the cheeses that we use for the uh, pizzas and pastas. So another Obviously local, like Parmesan, yeah, another local, local person making yeah. cheese for you. Yeah. You just kind of uh, yeah. all over it, and then mortadella laid out. Slice the mortadella on top. And, and then the stretched dough. part yeah. of dough back on top. Yeah. It has a little uh, honey, a little, little honey, salt, a little, little olive oil. Yeah, a little olive oil. Yeah, quite a bit of olive oil. So uh, as you start to oven. just, like, I mean, oh, yeah. this is, and it's, it, it's like oh, that. It's so good. And so inside it's got, look how thin that crust is. Yeah. Right? And then the mortadella right there, and then thin, the cheese. Thin, thin mortadella, and just the melted cheese. And it's funny, because every time I like order yeah. this with like a bunch of friends, we have it, and people are like, what? Yeah. Like, Wait, what? So, yeah. <laughs> Your wife designed this. The grill. Yeah, yeah, so she designed the grill. And again, it was a matter of like getting some flexibility in the grill and being able to, like you said, cook in many different ways, whether it's over baskets, over the live fire, ride directly over the coals, in the coals. Is it full on flame? It doesn't yeah. have a little bit of smoke element to it. Yeah. Or are you looking for embers where you're going yeah. for heat and then you get that, whether it is the, the marinade drizzling or yeah. the product drizzling, you get that, that smoke that, that comes off. Back, it. yeah. Yeah. It's not an easy way to cook. It's not. The green beans. Yeah, the green beans are, are a must, I think, every yeah. time. Yeah, the green bean salad. I think there would be a riot if we took it off the menu. I would, <laughs> it's one of those things that's like, it's got the ember, it's got the flavor, it's got the smoke, but then it's got the vegetal or the yeah. green, and then it's got that little bit of Fresno chili yeah. in it, and then some olives which yeah. give it that brininess, but then it's like that sweet pecan, or yeah, sweet almond, almond, yeah, almond, almond sweet yeah. almond. And it's yeah. just, it's perfection. You've got that blistered bean salad that we yeah, talked yeah. about. Yeah, you can see that char, that smoke. They're still, they're still crunchy and green. What's up with this? So that's a little uh, lambrusco uh, that we actually pour for, for every table that comes in as long as they're drinking. Uh, so a little, little cleft of Chiarli. All right, let me check this out real quick. So you got pea shoots on top of here. I always yeah. just kind of kick that to the side. It's nice, it oh, gives you that vibrant yeah. little but look at the char on these things. Like, 
and they're not overcooked. You got shaved shallots. Candied almonds. And I, I, <laughs> ooh, look at here. So a little sure. pasta genovese. Yeah. So simple. Uh, really, like the, the little the little key thing is uh, the lanchera that Matt makes. Uh, so it's, you know, treated like pancetta, which, you know, cured pork yeah. belly, uh, but with lamb belly. Just to kind of give it that, that extra edge. Uh, and it's, it's delicious. Cacio beve pizza. So traditionally, this is a pasta uh, traditionally dish. Traditionally, it's a like simple pasta dish. Spaghetti, yeah. Yeah. farm, parmigiano reggiano, yeah. black yeah. pepper, and pasta water. We made it into a, into a pizza. And, and it's fantastic. It kinda, yeah. I mean, this is like two very classic things, yeah. right? Cacio pepe and yeah. pasta genovese. So we take classic dishes uh, for some of the inspiration. And, you know, I had a little tweak here and Let's there. Let's see what you're going to do with this. Because, like, this one, your dough is fantastic. All right, look at that. No tomato. No tomato, yeah, just the, just the cheese sauce. And again, like this, the, the cheese sauce here is made with, you know, cachota, a, a cheese from uh, that Andrea Lira Rosa makes for us with, with, uh, uh, with black pepper. And that's something yeah. that I tell people this a lot. When you're committed to a farmer, yeah. they're committed to you. Oh, big time. And yeah. like, they'll make whatever you want now. Yeah. Oh, look at this yeah. son of a gun right yeah. here. Yeah. tomato and pepper sauce. Thank you. So, you know, again, chicken from the grill uh, with, you know, just the tomato and shallot and, and, and red wine sauce. Uh, yeah, there's some chorizo in there as well. <laughs> A little grilled lemon, you know, can't go wrong. That's really delightful. Really, really delightful. And then I got this cocktail, um, yeah, little. Naked and Famous. Naked and Famous. I like it. Yellow chartreuse. Yeah. Mezcal. Aperol. Lime juice. Lime juice. Simple. Awesome. It's beautiful, too. What do it taste like? Cheers. Yeah, but I mean, you can't go wrong. Those, I might this. be naked yeah. and infamous. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Think Lucy make me some of that mint gelato? Oh, yeah. Stuff is magical. I see, see, that, see if we have it right now. See, there's always, always a gelato. Always a gelato. Right. We always have a couple, but the one on the menu kind of garnished up. Yeah. Yeah, this is the last of the season of this yeah. one. So this is the mint gelato, which basically has a magic shell on top of it. And then inside of this, yeah, yeah is, into it. is like you get these little treasure troves cocoa nibs. of roasted cocoa nibs. Look yeah. at this, look at that. Right there. It's so fresh. Like that mint, it's literally alive. Yeah, so we do a, just a cold infusion of whole mint leaves with all the dairy. Well, because traditionally when you have mint, like mint chocolate chip ice cream or mint chocolate ice yeah. cream, like that mint is so powerfully fake. Yeah, and just overwhelming. Right, and that green color, but even if it's white, it's like super yeah. like fake mint. And this is like, you can tell, it's like literally biting into a fresh mint leaf. Yeah. It's fantastic. The best chocolate chip cookie in the city. Yeah, it's good. It's addicting. When we were all doing takeout food. Yeah, yeah. My wife ordering like a dozen of them. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, so orders just There's plenty of orders of just ch chocolate chip cookies when we were doing takeout like only. Fish. They're big. Big chunks of chocolate, yeah. salt on them. Yeah. You guys sell them at Montrose Cheese and Wine. Yeah. They're not on the menu here. Uh, no, it's a special request. In kids' menu. Yeah. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do it, you know? If you know, so you know. So basically, I'm a child. Because <laughs> we order right, every we, time. We should all be. <laughs> Doing good work, my man. Well, thank you, man. All right. We're Rosie. What are you going to get? Right off the bat, order the focaccia de reco. Then move on to the blistered bean salad. Fantastic. Then after that, Cacio de Pepe, but pizza style. That's what I'm talking about. And then for dessert, you can't go wrong with anything, but the gelato selections are some of the best I've ever had. Absolutely delicious. All right, so Rosie Cannonball, live fire, fantastic. We're gonna go just a few blocks down the street. We're gonna go to Candente, which is arguably one of the most delicious Tex-Mex places in the city. Why? Live fire, all mesquite, hardwood, cooking over flames, cooking over smoke, cooking over embers. Fajitas, a must. All right, I'll meet you over there. Let's head out. This week, Candente. We're gonna talk Tex-Mex. What makes this so special? Right here, baby. Mesquite, lots and lots of mesquite. They have a beautiful grill inside. Everything's cooked over a live fire. If I go travel around the country, go meet my chef friends, one thing they ask for, bring the tortillas, bring the rice and beans from Candente. Every time, never fails. It's pretty darn good. It's really a problem for me, but 
Let's go do this, all right? <laughs> Come on. Smoke brisket fat. <laughs> Tortillas. For my tacos. Yes. Out of all the Tex-Mex places in the city, and everybody has their neighborhood joint. Right. right. This just right. happens to be mine. I'm going to be mad at you for a minute because I, it really, when I order, it takes me like 20 minutes to get it together. Yeah. Because it's just like, but I want this, mm, but I want this, mm, but I want this, mm, but I want this. Yeah. My wife has definitely got her go-to, and I know what it is. Yeah. But me, it's like, she's like, what is taking you so long? Right. I'm like, do I want the rib? Yeah. Do I want the chicken fajita? Yeah. I grew up in Houston, so Tex-Mex is kind of in our blood. I mean, I grew up, those were family dinners on the weekends. We would go out to the local little Tex-Mex place. And obviously you grow up your favorites and your favorite combo play. That's just kind of who we are as people living in Houston. We wanted to be that old school Tex-Mex place with the big flat melted cheese enchiladas, chopped onions, rice and beans. We wanted to be traditional. But with that, we knew we had to just stand out a little bit. We were going to do full on classic full service Tex-Mex with a barbecue twist. You can still get your cheese enchiladas, you can still get your beef enchiladas, your crispy tacos, the things that we grew up with, we know we love, but you've also got a little bit of a smoke component. Even yeah. our chicken enchiladas is fully smoked chicken breast, shredded, over a real pit, real offset pit, <laughs> post oak, not, not like fake smoke. Yeah, you have a barbecue joint, pit room, about what, 200 feet from here? Yeah, literally one block. Yeah, literally one block one away. Block. And so you're cooking a lot of briskets and you're taking that rendered fat. Perpetually, if you talk to barbecue restaurants, it's like, what's your biggest waste? And they're like, brisket fat. Hands down. Hands down. And then we smoke it. We, so we actually render it on the pit until we make smoked beef tallow. That lard gets used for a whole other myriad of things. But the biggest usage of it is here at Candente. In the tortillas. In the flour tortillas. Yes. And look at this tortilla. That's I mean, if you can smell the kind of like a little hint, bit of, of, hint of smoke barbecue. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and literally just, it's, it's got the flavors. It's just, uh, that's great. This is definitely the Tex-Mex part of the deal, right? Is the cheese, the sour cream. Oh yeah. The pico, the lettuce. But then like, I'm like you, I need this. Right, exactly. Right? I need that little part of jalapeno, mm -hmm. that little love right there. And see, then this is how I progress through my meal is just these little things. Little, 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 Mini tacos. little hand tacos. Yeah, I like that. Because it's like, a good way to do it. Taco, like you can put, all of a sudden you, you built yourself a burrito and you're, yeah. one, you're one and done. You've got live mesquite fire grilling right. things, mm -hmm. right? So anything that comes off of that is delicious. It's got that right? white flavor. And then you've got this brisket fat tortilla that is perfect. A big thing that popped off is the burrilla tacos. And we actually take beef short rib and beef shank and smoke that. We rub it with the chili paste mm -hmm. and then we smoke that for two hours to get that smoke component on it. And then it goes into the braise and goes through the whole process of making it into the burrito, and the consomme, and this, that, and the other. Then you serve bone marrow on the side. And then you serve grilled bone marrow, grilled over mesquite. So everything that's picked up on the grill is all wood burning, no gas assist, 100% mesquite. Burn. Traditional in that Mexican grilled style. So you've got this beautiful grill. You've got a Jasper oven, right? Right. Where you're rocking the chickens in, and you're rocking fish in, and mm -hmm. then you've got this mesquite grill that's just like. We've got all this mesquite wood and the wood burning Jasper. Can't not have a redfish. But when you start talking about redfish on the half shell, and you're right, it is a very Texas thing. Mm. And the technique on that is put it on, you know, don't scale the fish mm. or don't leave, leave on the skin, leave the scales on. So it's that barrier protection. Right. You put it on the grill and then you cover it. Yep, put a cloche on it. And you let it kind of steam inside and let that fish steam out. You guys have, have gotten the technique down. Uh, I think one of the best, actually. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think I think the secret there is we do a little bit of a mojo marinade with a little bit of a lacquer. So it's got a little bit of molasses in there. We make a traditional mojo, pineapple, garlic, and auto. I'm always queso, side of chili torriado. Yeah. So to get the chili, like roasted chili bikinis and the habaneros yeah. and, and the hot, roasted chopped jalapenos, I'm like this with the bikinis, just yeah. popping them like popcorn, really. Yeah. Your carnitas? Yeah. Are an absolute thing of beauty.
probably one of my favorite things on the menu too. Yeah. So that with the Toriato, so I'm glad you said that. Yes. I feel, I feel like that's kind of a menu hack that most people don't, uh, yeah. don't order. It's but if you like spicy, so good. the step in the process that I think makes ours different than everybody else's is it goes into a 24 hour cure mm -hmm. with a dry seasoning. And on the second day, we, we braise those in bacon fat, rendered bacon fat. That's where the belly comes in. Yes, and then the secret there <laughs> is, <laughs> A bunch of onions rendered in the bacon fat that give that flavor all that bacon fat before the meat goes in. That gets dropped in the deep fryer to reinforce all that color and that crispiness. So it's really never picking up that crispiness until that, that final moment. And then we toss it. Uh, so we reserve some of that braising liquid <laughs> and we mix it with a little bit of our house uh, uh, butter when the carnitas come out. You know, we toss those in a little bit of that to reinforce some of that. Flavor. I mean, traditionally, the carnita is kind of this cooked piece of pork that's done, and and it's it's almost like I call it just hammered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And but this, like, see, so you still got the pieces of fatty stuff. Yes. Like this. You All got that. This, like, and then you pull this, in, and then just that. Right. You it's can't get like this that. anywhere. Golly. And then here's the. Like the foamy butter, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's insane. Foamy butter. Foamy butter. Talk to me about foamy butter. We're we gonna give the secret away of the foamy butter. You don't have to, <laughs> but it's kind of a thing. It took me a while to figure that out. I know, and it's special, so maybe we don't, and we let just people try and figure out how to do foamy butter, because I have yet to get it. Like <laughs> it ain't that complicated. I'll it, tell I, you that much. You know what? <laughs> and that that and the rib combo plate. Yes. The rib and the yeah. carnita. I'd probably be here every day. Maybe I'll put that on the menu. I, I would be here every day. That's a bad thing. Don't <laughs> do that. Just sounds like a good leave dish. it. No. It's the sum of all the parts, right? That um, make it what it is, right? Right. The beans are perfect to go with it. The rice, mixing it all together. Like I said to you earlier, the rice. If I could just do like I don't know, a quarter rice and like some carnitas on top. I think I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Absolutely. Literally good. Yeah. It's, most people do not finish those things. It's kind of like the afterthought, and it is not an afterthought here. It no. is fully thought through. It completes your meal. It's exactly what you said. It, it's those things have help. to be good. It's every once in a while you're in there and you're like, is that a whole roasted garlic clove? <laughs> like, yeah. what the heck? Yeah. I need to build your own platter. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of my favorite things is I have buddies text me all the time about what their new candente hack is, you know, and how they order candente. And, get the little add-ons or substitute this, and I, I just love it. But even you have everything there and you have the add-on section, so you can get whatever you want. I know, you know? I know, I love that. Ask next time for the taqueria green salsa with your chips. That's our version of, you know, the, oh, wait, the yeah, you know, the, uh, the oil and jalapeno, the emulsified salsa they do on the taco trucks. That's our version of that. And it's hot, it's hot. It's good though, it's real good, it's real oh. good. Yeah. There's secrets. Yeah, of course. Gotta have a secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, life just opened its doors yeah. to me right now. Yeah, Thank right? you. I'm so glad we had this meeting. Yeah. All right, what to order at Candente? This is easy for me. Go ahead, get you the queso, throw on the chili torreados on the side, little charred jalapenos and habaneros, little toasted pekin chilies. Light you up in the best way possible. Get that El Director. I like a good combo plate. And then fajita, 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 fajita. Don't forget the carnitas. Also, don't sleep on the ribs. So we went to Rosie, we went to Candente, we talked about live fire at both of those places. Now we're gonna talk about doing it in your backyard, all right? See you in just a minute. Live fire. The way to go. I have a vertical pit in the backyard, which I really enjoy. But you can do this on a Weber, you can do this on whatever grill you're rocking. Even if you're using gas, that's cool too, but if you've got one of those kettle grills, build that fire to the side, get a good char, move everything off to the side. As you can see, like what I'm doing is I charred this chicken, I've been marinated, now I put it up and I'm just gonna let it slow roast. I've got stuff hanging all over the place. A little sausage, a little cauliflower, a little pineapple. We're gonna do some chicken wings. If I light a fire, I'm cooking everything. Everything's done on here. We're gonna char some cabbage. The whole dinner, the whole lunch, whatever it's gonna be, is basically done over fire. Why? 
flavor, texture, everything about it. Now what I do, I always start my cold bed early. So this has been going about two, three hours. And basically I'm just using hickory wood today because I like the flavor of it. When we start talking about the lifespan of fire, we've got fresh wood on here and that's gonna give kind of this intense heat, the smoke flavor. And then as we start to build that coal bed, it's just gonna give you the indirect heat that you really want. You can see it happening as we speak. We've got three different sections of, of flame, if you will. The coal bed down below, which gives you a lot of like roasting power and a lot of heat. And then right here in the middle, you can see that smoke start to come off. And that's where that wood is starting to, to turn into that ember right through here. And then the wood right on top, you're getting that fresh heat, that fresh smoke, that flame, all of it's coming, com com combining to give you the flavors that you want out of using live fire. Now you have to be a little bit careful. That's why we've got stuff hung everywhere. We just, see, like this has been on here. It's not super hot, but we're just gonna slow roast it and kind of smoke it for about two hours. Then we'll come back to it. Same with the chicken, cauliflower, pineapple too. But you're gonna need snacks, right? So we're gonna put some chicken wings on. My favorite chicken wings are charred up on live fire. Absolutely my favorite. So we're gonna put them up here. We're gonna let them kind of smoke a little bit, kind of indirect heat, and then we're gonna drop it down, get that good char, all right? That's what I'm talking about. I am a big chicken wing fanatic. I've let these marinate for a couple of days. Just some like nice Creole seasoning, a little bit of olive oil. And now we're just gonna let them sit up here for a little while, right? We're gonna let them kind of roast. And then when we get down, look, look at this thing. We're just gonna drop them down, get that nice char on them. First quarter, we're gonna bring that back up, twist it up. Then we'll move into this, maybe third quarter. The pineapple, cauliflower, we'll put that together, chop it up, make a nice little salad, maybe a little bit of raw onion in it. Sausage, half time, baby. So just get outside, fire up a pit, have some fun. It takes a little bit of work. It's worth it though. Other places for live fire. Head on over to Cultivari. They've got one of those Jasper ovens as well. Get the chicken, get it charred. You will not regret it. Ala Seal, they do all their kebabs over live fire. Super delicious. Do not forget El Hildalguense. They do the lamb barbacoa and the kettles. They catch that thing on fire. It's worth every second of your life. All right, what's next? We'll see you then. I literally just put a ball of fire yeah, in my face. In your mouth. Oh my God. It's still early, but that's the worst decision I've made today. <laughs> wow. You still got a while. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> so right now we're going to talk Rosie Cannonball. Someday soon, yes. March. That's nice.